everyone! Heidi Mitchell from NC Guppy here. Uh, just wanted to start off the new vlog series with something that I did have a request for. Um, so I'm starting out a new series called Tank Talk Tuesdays where I'm gonna kinda discuss something that you guys want to know about an aquarium. It can be anything from you know water changes to diseases to tank maintenance to species spotlights, whatever you guys want. Um, I'm going to kind of just always talk to you guys a little bit about stuff. Now my first request was actually um, <laughs> an update video for the blue metals here and also a request for some information on Colmenaris which is actually a bacterial infection um, that we're going to go over. Now many of you um, I just got my uploads done, but many of you know that these guys did come with Colmenaris, or they got Colmenaris during shipping. It was pretty rough. They did not ship well. Um, they weren't the hardiest in shipping. So I did start out, for those of you who didn't watch my unboxing video, um, there were 17 total, counting the original trio that I got, and then the others that I got um, from my second order I did where they gave me a deal and it was awesome and I got a ton I got I think a 14 came in that box but unfortunately four arrived dead they looked really rough um, they just didn't didn't look too good at all so I ended up losing all but four these four are the only four that are left um, I was lucky in that it is three females and a male um, so I'm hoping that I can get some babies from them, but who knows, uh, no one has died in over a week, so I'm hoping that we nipped it in the bud and everything is good and everybody is happy and healthy. They're all eating graciously, they've gained weight, um, and they are looking fairly good, so knock on wood. Um, sorry fish, <laughs> I guess that was too close. Um they are looking pretty good. So unfortunately Colmenaris is often diagnosed as something else. Oftentimes it is believed to be either fin rot or a fungal infection. And that is mainly because Colmenaris, um, one of the main things it does is it'll shred the fins. Uh, as you can see luckily this guy had super shredded fins but luckily he grew his tail back and um, these two ladies grew theirs back and then this little female had like almost her whole top fin gone and she's grown that back in just like a week and a half. Um, so they're doing very well now. I'm hoping that they're recovering. Also some signs, they did body wagging, which is where they pretty much hovered in place and like really sharply, I'll kind of show you with my hand as dumb as this is going to look. Um, they would sit in place and they would just sharply like waggle back and forth like their whole body like this and so and they would kind of like twitch sometimes when they did it so you would see like a lot of back and forth body wagging where it looked like they were like straight and real hard back and forth um some other signs there was white cotton in the mouth it looked white and cottony which is why it's often mistaken for a fungal infection because it'll have like white fuzzy in the mouth can be on the back. Mine never got it on the body or on the back. They always died before that. Um, but it can have white patches on the body and the back, white patches in the mouth, torn up fins, body wagging, and I do have some video of them when they first arrived and when like a little bit after they arrived um, that'll show some of the signs that I'll show you a little later in the video. But, um, and unfortunately they never really super developed white patches for me to show you. They did have a little bit of cotton in the mouth. Like I said, some of them did. Most of them, once they contracted it, died within 24 hours. Um, once I noticed that they started to really show signs, other than fin rot, pretty much everybody looked like they had fin rot. But once they started to show the cotton in the mouth, or especially the hovering and body wagging and lethargy, I knew that they were going to die even with medication. Um, so just to kind of go over a little bit with you guys, Colmenaris is a gram-negative aerobic bacteria. 
And basically that means that most of your standard antibiotics, like uh, I know you guys know I use um for quarantine, that did not help it. And that's unfortunately a mistake on my part. Um, I did not know that when I first started. So I dropped uh, mithrosin in there and unfortunately it did nothing the first few days. So I panicked because I was like, well, maybe it's not Colmenaris. And then I really started reading and found out that you have to have a gram negative bacteria um, or gram negative uh, antibiotic that'll treat that. So basically I had to um, get, uh, let me grab it here. Um, had to get this, which is Furin 2, um, and of course it does say it treats bacterial fish disease, and you can kind of see it does open red sores, fin and tail rot, uh, he I'm not even going to try to say that, body slime, eye cloud, all of these are treated, or gram negative signs. So you certainly can get it here. So I did grab this um, because I read that it can help and you can kind of see it'll show you what it does on the back and then these are the instructions. I do 100% recommend that you follow the instructions fully because uh, for bacteria or for antibiotics with bacteria if you don't follow the instructions fully and do the full dose of it, it can actually work in disfavor for you. It can actually end up making the bacteria stronger resistance to it. So um, you definitely want to follow the instructions. Once you get it, you'll be able to see it too. But it says, for best results, remove filter media. Um, I don't because I have a sponge filter, so I have no carbon, so it's not going to hurt it. Um, however, Furin 2 can kill your filtration, your biological filtration, which it might even say on there, I'm not even sure. Oh yeah, it says antibiotic medication may inhibit the biological filter, adding API quick starter, blah, 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 blah. So it can hurt your biofilter. Um, I also had live plants in this tank, uh, just because I like to toss a little live plants in, even when I'm quarantining, just because I think they help a lot. However, I'm not sure if it was the furin or the salt, most likely the salt, uh, killed all the plants that were in here. Um, but just kind of be aware and kind of watch your plants if you have live plants. Uh, I'm not sure if it is detrimental to snails or not. I don't, I don't believe it says so. Uh, treatment may be repeated if necessary. It does cause a slight discoloration to the water. It kind of turns your water like a nasty swamp color. Um, so definitely be prepared for that. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to do um, a dose for every 10 gallons, so pack for every 10 gallons. I always treat and quarantine in 10 gallon tanks. And I know I've said this before on a video, but I always do it because it, it costs way less money. <laughs> and so if you quarantine in 10 gallons, then you only have to use one pack at a time, which is kind of nice. So I only had to use one pack because you use one pack for every 10 gallon. You, enter, you empty it directly into the aquarium, repeat dose after 24 hours, wait another 24 hours, and change 25% of the aquarium water. Repeat this treatment for a second time for a total of four doses. So again, you would add a packet, and then wait 24 hours, and then add another packet, and then wait another 24 hours, and do another 25% water change. Um, I will say, I did this treatment, and I also dosed salt heavily. Um, which I did just regular aquarium salt, I believe, and did it per the package instructions for treating sick fish. And the two combined looks like it got rid of it. Um, as I said, these guys are the ones that are left. They're definitely looking pretty good compared to what they were looking like. And again, I treated them and then did the dose and then I repeated it and did another eight packets. Um, I didn't use Canaplex, but a lot of people say the only way that they can get rid of it is to treat with Furin and Canaplex at the same time. Um, however, I didn't have Canaplex, and I didn't know that until after the fact. So I only treated with Furin 2, and it seemed to work for me. 
Um, again, I treated with furin 2 and salt, um, plus I fed them, I put uh, minced garlic in their flakes and fed them that and put an Indian almond leaf in there. That is literally the only stuff I did. Um, and it seems to have passed. They definitely seem healthy and happy. They're eating like crazy. Um, this female here was so thin, like she was so anorexic looking. I felt so bad for her and she's fattening back up. She's looking pretty good. Um, but like her belly was sunken, like past her gills. She was so thin. I really didn't think she was going to make it, but she pulled through. She was definitely the worst one out of the four. And I just really didn't think she was going to make it, and she surprised me. She's a fighter. So I'm hoping her strong genes will pass on and help make the next uh, generation of offspring a little more, hopefully, healthier. I know definitely before I ship these guys anywhere, I'm going to do a shipping test with them just to see how they go through shipping once they have babies. I probably won't offer any of these for sale for a couple of generations just because I really want to put them through kind of the test and I really kind of want to have a couple of generations where I choose to try to make the, the genetics stronger in these guys, make them a little more hardy. Um, let's see if I have missed any. Oh, um, well, like I said, the signs um, were general body wagging. Uh, cotton mouth, cotton patches on the body, lethargy, they'll start laying on the bottom. None of them had swollen bellies. They, instead, they really got um, super thin and kind of wasting. So if you see kind of a fish wasting. Um, and again, I've read online, done a lot of research, and it seems like each strain is different than the other strains. So there's four different main types of um, Colmenaris, and they all kind of act a little differently. So you won't always necessarily see all the signs. Like one of them, really, the only sign was black uh, or um, red blood spots on the body, is what it said. So you might not see all the signs, but those are definitely some to look out for. And again, white cottony patches. A lot of people tend to think that they're fungus. And it actually ends up being Colmenaris, because it does look a lot like fungus. Um, kind of like if you leave a piece of fish food in the aquarium, and it starts to grow that fungus on it, like that white fuzzy stuff. That's actually pretty much what it looks like on the fish, except it's not fungus, it's actually bacteria culturing. And I read online, again, I didn't experience this personally, but I read online someone actually had it so bad that those white stringy... Um, colonies of them actually formed on the tank glass and stuff and again people said um, that they essentially had to break down their aquarium and clean it and some people put hydrogen peroxide in it again I would a hundred percent recommend looking that up doing a lot of research on that before you even think about doing it um, and then some people said they just fully broke their tank down and cleaned everything with um, a water mixture of bleach and water. And again, I would research that. I didn't do that. I found that the um, Furin 2 seemed to take care of all of it. I did do heavy water changes. I did the 25%, the 25% as suggested, but then afterwards I did about 50 to 75% on this tank uh, almost every day or every other day for probably about a week. And again, I would add in salt um, after, for every water change. I would try to add in. And again, when you add in salt, don't add it in for the whole for the whole tank. Just add it in for what you replace. So, like if you do 25% of a 10 gallon tank, I'm really bad at math, but just figure out how many about how many gallons you've taken out. For me, it's about five gallons when I take stuff out, which is about half, which is what I was doing. So I would just kind of add the salt back for a little under half um, and kind of rotate that around. <laughs> She's very hungry, apparently. She's trying to tell me off there. So definitely do that. And unfortunately, again, mitherson doesn't tend to work. 
I do promote the use of amythricin and I use it in quarantining everything, but it's not a gram negative uh, antibiotic, so unfortunately it's just, it doesn't tend to do a whole lot against it. So <clears throat> despite that being my favorite antibiotic, in this case furin 2 had to be added. And I think, <coughs> I even had somebody ask, I'm sorry, my allergies are crazy. <coughs> I had somebody ask, oh, are you going to switch amythricin for furin 2 in your quarantine process? No, I don't think I'm going to. Mainly because, one, it makes the tank look disgusting. And then two, and even though the quarantine tanks, I can't help it. I don't like disgusting looking tanks. And um, two, I really think that most stuff you get, like most of the junk you get, is going to probably be gram positive. So I figure I'm going to just keep a mitherson in my quarantine. And then if I notice symptoms, as soon as I notice symptoms, I'll drop furin to it. Anything like raggedy fins, anything at this point, I'm definitely going to start to drop furin to it. Um, it was a super fast acting disease. Basically, I noticed signs the first day. And within two days, a majority of the guppies that died were dead. Um, some kind of hang, kind of like to hang on, and they died maybe four or five days later. And then I think I had a couple die like a week later. So it's definitely a fast acting disease, spreads quickly. This is also a reason why I would say make sure that everything you have is unique to your tank. Um, I can't even imagine because it, it does spread so quickly. I can't imagine if I used like the same net or the same siphon for two different tanks. It would have contaminated that tank too and then I would have had catastrophic losses for multiple tanks. So again, I'm going to strongly urge everyone make sure that you have separate tools for separate tanks. I use a water siphon per tank and I use like I have nets, specific nets for every tank. I have dip and pours for every tank. I have pretty much anything you can think of and I wash my hands in between doing anything with tanks. So um, for example when I do a water change on this tank I'll do the water change, dump it, do all that stuff. I even have separate dump buckets for every tank. And so I'll separate it, dump it, and then go wash my hands really good with some Dawn soap. Rinse it off really, really well. Probably wait 15, 20 minutes and then do a water change on another tank. And that's just, could be me being overly cautious, but I'm not trying to spread diseases between tanks especially if something is in a quarantine tank because um, this is one of two quarantine tanks I have <clears throat> and again they're still in here because I don't trust it quite yet sure it's been about a week and a half it's maybe been maybe two weeks since I've had fish die but I just I can't bring myself to trust it to add them anywhere um, or even like even in an empty tank I don't want to add them in another empty tank because I don't want to risk if they have a relapse or something like that, it being in another tank I own. So I got this one for $10 at the $10 per gallon sale. If it always has this nasty Colmenaris in it and I just can't seem to get rid of it, it's not a big loss if I have to chuck it. If I put them in a 110 stock tank or 110 stock tank outside, then that's going to be catastrophic because th those are $70 as opposed to 10 So. These guys will probably stay in quarantine another month, maybe more, just until I'm absolutely sure that it's gone. And then once I'm absolutely sure that it's gone, they'll move to a, a, their permanent home tank. And again, this female is particularly pregnant, so I'm hopeful that she'll drop some fry. I've got artificial spawn mops in here because I don't want to put plants in, doing that I'm still putting some salt in. So I do have some artificial spawn mops thrown in, just as baby savers. Um, I haven't, they haven't had any babies, except when they were very sick. Um, 
when they were very sick, they had one, one female had nine fry. One female came with fry, and then one female had nine fry shortly after. And unfortunately, they, they all died within 24 hours. So, I'm not entirely sure if they're fry eaters. I know the mom didn't eat the fry in the bag, which could have just been due to stress. And the mom that had the babies didn't eat them. Um, they didn't eat them then, but again, I don't know if that was just because they were quite sick. So, I'm hoping that they're not fry eaters. They're like my Nebula Steels, and they don't eat fry. Which would be super easy and awesome if they do eat fry. I'll have to put a breeder trap in there. But hopefully she'll drop soon. She's looking a little square. She's starting to get there. Uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that it will be soon for her. But she was probably the healthiest through the whole thing. She really never seemed that sick. Again, her top fin kind of got whittled down a little bit. But she never hovered. She never came off her food. She always did really well. So I'm hoping she has super awesome genes to pa pass on. And then, like I said, that female, I really thought the dark-tailed female back there was going to pass on, but she didn't. She's, she's recovering really well, so I'm hopeful for that. The male looked pretty raggedy, but he came back, and he's looking good. And then the other female, um, she was just kind of in the middle. She looked a little rough, but not as rough, and she came back as well. So, hopefully, I'll have a good update for you guys in a week or so. Um, and I'll update you guys when she has her fry, if if they live or if they get eaten, or so on. Um, again, as you all know, I don't I don't use breeder boxes, so it's either a breeder trap, which is a large cylinder that I put in the tank that the parents live in, and then they have the babies and the uh, babies swim out into the main tank, or I let them free range if they don't eat their babies, like my Nebula Steels do. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it, it gives you a little clarity. If you do have Colmenaris and you're watching this, I'm so sorry. It is hard to get rid of. But just know that you can. You have support. There are people out there who are going through it too or have been through it and understand. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to message me. Again, I'm not the biggest fish expert in the entire world. I'm constantly learning every day. I did do a lot of research, probably hours and hours and hours of research to try to save these guys. So I'd be happy to share anything that I know with you. Um, and I hope that you have all the luck and you get rid of it as well. And again, I would definitely treat with Furin 2, if not Furin 2 and Kenaplex. Again, though I don't have Kenaplex, I just treated with Furin 2. And I treated twice in a 10 gallon for a total of 8 doses. And also salted, fed a little garlic, and put an Indian almond leaf in there. So hopefully this video will help you out. Please hit me up in the comments and let me know. If you do have Colmenaris for support, hit me up and I will send support and well wishes. If you've beaten Colmenaris, post and let us know how you did it. If you're afraid of Colmenaris, you can post on that too if you have any comments. And certainly, as always, if you need more information or anything, feel free to message me. If you want to see a video on something, message me. And if you're interested in my guppies, snails, plecos, quarries, pretty much anything I breed, visit my Facebook page and see Guppy for more information on that. And feel free to message me there. I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I will see you for next Tuesday's Tank Talk. All right. Bye, guys. Alright, so here are some signs. We have the male is body wagging with white cotton in the mouth. Females uh, below him is body wagging with clamped fins. And the female on the bottom is wasting or thinning and not really moving around. These were all standard signs.